Hello, future leaders. My name is Trisha Duckworth. I am the executive director and founder of Survivors Speak. I have a master's degree in social work from the University of Southern California, and I went to elementary school just like you at Woodrow Wilson Elementary School in Port Huron, Michigan. A little bit about Survivors Speak. We believe that your voice, my voice, everyone's voice is so important. So we work with people so that we can all sound the alarm about things that are important to us. We want you to understand just how important your voice is. It's very important to us. So today we are excited to read this amazing book to you, Lift As You Climb, the story of Ella Baker. This is by Patricia Ruby Powell. And our Gregory Christie is our illustrator. Let's jump right in. Under a bright North Carolina sun, Ella rode to church with her granddaddy and mama. When granddaddy Mitchell stood to preach, Ella sat in the deacon's chair, legs ruler straight, ears soaking up his strong voice. He preached, give to others. He preached, join together. He spoke freedom. He asked, what do you hope to accomplish? After church at granddaddy's farm, the farm he and grandma worked as slaves, the farm they toiled on like mules after emancipation till they bought and owned it, where Ella played catch ball with her cousins until grandma said, dinner time. And afterwards, listen, back when we were slaves, master said, bet you marry a light skin, Cotter. I said, no how. Master, also my daddy, made me plow the swamp to break me. After turning them up, I went and jumped the broom, married a proud, dark Mitchell, your granddaddy, and danced all night long. Ella drank the story up till it filled her bones. She listened to neighbors tell about chopping cotton. Many still lived in shacks worked white people's land like her grandparents had back in slave days. On their land, her grandparents raised vegetables, hogs, and cows. On their land, they built a church and a school. Church said, help your neighbor. Mama said, lift as you climb. When Ella was about 10, Mama said, Ella, help the neighbors. Ella rounded up the motherless children, dragged them home, dunked them, scrubbed them, dressed them in clean clothes, returned them to their grateful daddy. Ella harvested peas. After her family ate their fill, she took a peck of peas to the neighbors. When strangers came over, Ella stoked the fire Warm the food to serve it. At 14, Ella set off for boarding school in Raleigh. High school and college at Shaw University, top of her class. Worked as a waitress to pay her way. After she graduated, Ella moved to New York. She asked herself, what do I hope to accomplish? She would lift as she climbed. She joined voices that demanded, don't buy where you can't work. Negroes needed jobs. White shops owners needed Negroes to buy from their shops or they'd close. Without jobs, without money, Negroes couldn't buy from white shops. Ella and other colored people 
told shop owners so. Some whites hired a few blacks. They needed each other. Ella fought for that step toward justice. She fought for her rights. She fought for her people. She got a job with the NAACP, the NAACP raised money to fight racial injustice in the courts by selling memberships and registering voters. The NAACP focused on finding members in the Negro elite, preachers and doctors, businessmen. But Ella had a different ideal. She'd find a church, get herself invited, talk at a Sunday service, make friends with everyday people, middle-class maids, shop workers, and poor sharecroppers. Not just the elite. And she would ask, what do you hope to accomplish? She listened in Mims, Florida. Our principal asked for teachers' pay equal to white teachers' pay. Whites dynamited his house, killed him. Ella Moore then said, you want equal pay for Negroes? Register to vote. Choose your representative. They will listen to your complaint. That representative will fight for the Negro. All over the South, Ella made speeches about freedom, voting, rights, words straight from her heart to the hearts of her audience. Then she'd asked, what do you hope to accomplish? In one Virginia town, people objected to police brutality. Why the police beat Negroes when they hadn't committed a crime? Another town wanted better teachers' salaries and school buses. Another, use of city parks and playgrounds. They wanted fair treatment. But the Negro middle class resisted joining the NAACP and getting the vote. Why anger their white bosses, risk their jobs, their comforts? Why risk being hungry? Ella told this story. Across the tracks, the poor live in filth and get diseases. Those diseases hop those itty bitty tracks and infect you. That made sense to the middle class. All Negroes were in this together. They'd have to risk angering their bosses. Ella and her new friends, workers, partners, believers, mostly women, walked into bar and grills, schools, beer gardens, boot black parlors. She was always poised as a lady, always Miss Baker posing the question, what do you hope to accomplish. People wanted freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. and 100 men, mostly preachers, and Ella worked together for black freedom. They formed the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Churches worked with preachers at the top, handing down knowledge from the pulpit to the flock. That's how these preachers wanted to work now, like their churches did, from the top down. Ella worked from the bottom up, from the grassroots, she wanted people to solve their own problems like her mother taught her, lifting as she climbed. 
but the powerful men weren't used to women working in their inner circle. Ella listened to the people, then raised their questions with the preachers. Shouldn't we harness the power of black women as leaders? Shouldn't we train local leaders? Shouldn't we create education programs? She challenged Reverend King with her ideals. Rather than just the elite and the middle class, what about the poorest? What about the people at the bottom? Dr. King didn't always agree with Ella, but he respected her. He said, Ella must head up our new organization, the SCLC, to register voters and to stand up to the whites. His order came from the top down. Ella thought he should ask, not command, she still agreed for the cause. For the freedom movement, she'd empower people to take action. She'd register voters. Then something amazing happened. Negro students sat at white only lunch counters. They wanted to be served hamburger along with white people in the store where they brought school supplies in Greensboro, Nashville, Atlanta, Durham. Sit-ins exploded throughout the South. Ella had never been so excited. She brought the students together at a conference at Shaw University. She wanted them to organize. A united swell of voices was more powerful than individual voices. They asked her advice. Always the teacher, she asked them, what do you hope to accomplish? They wanted to register voters. They wanted to stage sit-ins. They named themselves Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, SNCC. Students staged sit-ins. Some got whipped or spat on. They sat quietly responding with non-violence. Many were jailed. Ella listened and comforted them, brought toothbrushes and soap to their cells. She advised them, lift as you climb. The students ventured back into the fight, armed with Ella's wisdom. Tennessee tenant farmers, poor Negroes working for white plantation owners, hungry and bone tired from overwork, tried to register to vote. White bosses evicted them from their shacks, beat them from being bold. Now the sharecroppers lived in tents. The students asked them, what do you hope to accomplish? They wanted justice. They wanted to vote. They wanted to be treated like citizens. Ella worked alongside the students when they rode in battered school buses and commercial buses testing the new integration laws by breaking old Jim Crow laws. They sat in white only seats. They came south to help desegregate. In Alabama, the buses were firebombed. Students were beaten, jailed. Those freedom riders of 1961 woke up the nation.
Ella had helped plan the rides. She advised the students in meetings on car trips over ice cream sundaes. At night sharing tiny beds as students brainstorm, connected, struggled to become their own leaders. Many of them women when it was new to a woman to be leading. Ella said, we are not fighting for the freedom of the Negro alone, but for the freedom of the human spirit. To her last days, Ella fought for freedom, lifting as she climbed. The seeds she sowed all her life continue to bear fruit today. She said, the struggle for rights didn't start yesterday and has to continue until it is won. What do you hope to accomplish? The end. Thank you so much for letting me read with you today.